Open Photoshop, you will see a toolbox, the menu headings at the top of the screen and four windows on the right, the color palette and its menu, the navigator and its options, the history windows, and the window for the layers, channels, and paths. You will learn all about opening pictures from the internet or photos from a CD-ROM in the next chapter. First, let's open a blank page so you can try out some of Photoshop's tools. Opening a new page. Go to File and select New. It is the first item in the menu headings at the top of the screen. You can start a blank page with this new dialog box. Give your page a name. And then size your image in the Image Size dialog window, Width and Height, Pixels, Inches, Centimeters, Points, Picas, or Columns here in the drop-down menus. We will choose Inches. Choose 7 inches by 5 inches. It is a convenient size to display on a normal screen. In Chapter 3, Colors, you will learn all about color modes. You must set the page contents to white so you get a white canvas to paint on. This new window in the new dialog box is the active window and the canvas is the large white square within. This is the place you create and form images. Open more than one window at a time and you will see only one is the active window. Try with your cursor to click and drag the window. See how it expands, but notice that the canvas size stays the same. Go to the menu at the top and select Image Canvas Size to change the size of the canvas. You can itemize a new width and height for the canvas. This gives you more room around the image. You can locate your current canvas by clicking the white square and you'll find it in the new canvas. The Toolbox Use the toolbox like a paint box. You have four kinds of tools. Selection tools are used to select all kinds of parts of a picture. Click and drag the marquee or the lasso tool over the part of the image that you want to select. With this move tool, you move the selected area to another place on the page. Have a closer look at some of the tool icons. They have a tiny black triangle in the lower right corner. Click and hold down the mouse button. There are more tools of the same general kind available. There is also an airbrush, paintbrush, pencil, and rubber stamp. The airbrush and paintbrush can change width and angle. The pencil draws or erases a single pixel. To draw straight lines at 45 and 90 degree angles, you can use the line tool. The eraser takes away part of the picture. New to this version is the history brush. It can, combined with the history window, undo and redo as many times as you want. Smudge, blur, sharpen, and dodge, burn, sponge tools, blur and change the intensity of the image. These tools will be covered in detail in the chapter, Painting. There are two viewing tools, the hand tool and the zoom tool. The hand tool moves the image. Use the zoom tool to zoom in by clicking the tool on the canvas. You can see a magnified view of your picture zoom out again by pressing Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC as you click the image. Also by clicking and dragging, the zoom tool can enlarge the image. Special Tools The letter T stands for Type Tool. It creates editable type on its own layer. The Pen Tool draws curved or straight paths. In the chapter Path, you will learn how to use paths. New to this Photoshop version is the measure tool that measures dimensions and angles in the picture. You can measure a distance between two points by clicking and dragging a line. To measure an angle, first create a measured line. Hold down the Option or Alt key while clicking and dragging from the endpoint of the first line in the direction of the angle. This is the angle between the two lines. The gradient creates linear color blends. The paint bucket fills similarly colored areas. The eyedropper samples colors from the image. It makes it the active color that you can paint with. Here you can see the tool shortcuts. It gives you another access to the tools. Instead of clicking on the tools you want to use, you can type a single letter shortcut to select each tool. For example, V for Move tool, L for Lasso tool, and J for Airbrush tool. Press Shift and a shortcut key to cycle through related tools on the same pop-up menu. The menu across the top of the screen contains the commands. It is very easy. Click and hold the mouse button and drag it. An arrow off to the right of a menu command indicates submenus and commands. 
File and Edit menus. Here are the first two menus, File and Edit. With the File menu, you have options for opening, closing, saving, exporting, printing, and quitting the program. The Edit menu has the editing commands, Cut, Copy, Paste, Clear, and the most important one, Undo. And six menus for Photoshop, Image, Layer, Select, Filter, View, Window. The image menu shows you several submenus that allow you to select a color mode to work in. Choose RGB mode because that is what your monitor displays. In following chapters we will discuss in detail the color modes, adjusting colors, image size, and rotate canvas. The layer menu allows you to combine images, create collages, and make corrections. More about working with layers in the chapter Layers. The Select menu. You will learn all about selection modes in the chapter Selection Gear. It shows you how to select and work with selected parts of a picture. Mm -hmm. Filters, which perform a wide range of image editing functions, are organized into submenu groups. They sharpen or blur the picture. Colored pencil drawings or neon light sculpture. In the chapter Filters, we will work with them. The View command. The new view command displays the same image in a secondary window. Its commands let you zoom in and out of your image. The ruler, grid and guide commands enable you to measure and place objects accurately. You can measure the ruler in pixels, inches, centimeter, points, or picas. Guidelines enable you to measure and place objects accurately that you are going to add to the picture. Select view shows rulers. Put the mouse pointer on the ruler at the top of the screen and drag downward to place a horizontal guideline. This shows your position. The window menu commands display or hide the palettes. This window menu at the right of the top of the screen gives you a choice of brush sizes and shapes, colors, and access to layers, paths, and channels. Open with file preferences the dialog boxes. Now, scroll through the Preferences dialog boxes. This gives you an idea regarding settings. If you don't know some preferences, leave the default settings. As you learn more about setting in Photoshop, you can change preferences as you need to. First, you have to learn how to open and save your work. Go to File Open or use the key command Control O. This is the dialog box. Use it to locate the file you want to work on. Select it and double click or click open. All the visible files can be opened in Photoshop. To view files in all formats, choose All Formats from the Files or type drop down menu. Once it's opened, an image can be saved in any format that Photoshop reads. To save information in a file, you have to define a format. By doing so, you prepare the file in a way it can be recognized by other applications and is usable for printing and the Internet. For Windows-based systems, file formats are defined by three-letter extensions to file names, such as .doc, or a word processing document, or .bmp for a bitmapped graphic. With Preference option under File, Preferences, Saving Files. The Save As dialog box is new to this version and it can save your work in any of these formats. Save your files compatible to printer or to publish on the web. For your save side, use the file format .psd. Open and import files. You can open a file by double clicking on it and Photoshop will open by itself. If it is already open, you can double click on a file or use the file open command. A compatible file can be dragged onto the Photoshop icon. To import a file, use the import command file import. It lets you open files that have been saved in formats that use plug-in import modules. These include files saved with the Twain interface. Save your work as much as you can. It takes only a few seconds and it is faster than redoing it all if your computer crashes. Go to File Save or go to File Save As you will see the Save As dialog box. 
Name your file and choose an appropriate format. After you name the file, you can locate it. Recognize the difference between Save As and Save or Save Copy. The Save As command gives you an additional file so you can keep the original for a backup. By changing the file size, you can reduce the size of the image. Change the resolution in the Image Size dialog box. Your PC monitor uses 120 dpi and a standard TV screen has 72 dpi. Reduce the resolution to 72 dpi or to 120 dpi. Reducing the number of colors means reducing the bit depth. If you are working in grayscale, no color in the picture, reduce the bit depth to 8 bit. You can do this from the Image Mode submenu. The Edit menu includes Undo, which undoes the last modification made. New to this version is the multiple undo capability. Click a prior state on the History palette. It keeps a listing of every tool you used and every change you made. You will learn about it in the chapter Painting.